Puss in Boots Father is dead, and all he has left is the mill and ass and puss. I know those mean brothers of mine will take the mill and the ass and leave just puss for me. They will be able to earn a livelihood, but what am I going to do? Puss can look after himself by catching rats and mice, but how will I survive? Puss was very sad to see his master so depressed, and went and gently rubbed Jack's cheek with his paw. Do not despair, dear master. I know you think I am good for nothing, but I promise I will change your fortune. But for that, I need something. You have to buy me a pair of boots, and I want that old bag lying in your room. Now Jack had very little money, but he also knew that Puss was a very loyal cat and was willing to give him a chance. Oh well, it's not like I have much to lose anyway. We shall go tomorrow and buy you the boots with the little money that I have. Master, I promise you will not regret your decision. Jack bought Puss a pair of very smart leather boots of buff leather. Puss tried them on and indeed they fit very well and made Puss look very dashing. Now, Master, See how I will change your fortune. You placed your trust in me, and I will not let you down. Puss took the old bag lying in Jack's room, put two carrots in it, and made his way to the warrens nearby. As he had expected, soon two curious rabbits came sniffing up to the bag. Puss immediately pounced on them, put them in the bag, and tied the strings of the bag. He then started for the palace and asked to be presented to the king. Greetings to your majesty. My master, the Marquis of Karaba, sends you his respects and a gift of these rabbits. Oh, these look like juicy little fellows. Take them to the cook and ask him to prepare them for the evening meal. And convey my thanks to your master, er... The Marquis of Karaba, your majesty. Er, er, yes, yes, the Marquis of Karabas. Can't say I've heard of him, though. The cooks cooked a delicious meal, which the king and his beautiful daughter enjoyed. After a few days, Puss again came to the palace, this time with two big partridges. So, young fellow, how was your master? My master is well, your majesty. He sends his good wishes and a present for you. Another present? Eh? Well, well. And what has he sent now? Your majesty, please accept these partridges, which my master, the Marquis of Karaba, has sent with his respects. Oh, nice plump ones, I say. They should make a good meal. Thank your master once again, and I should look forward to meeting him sometime. The king and his daughter enjoyed the partridges and spoke about the generosity of the Marquis of Carabas. Puss would also take back a rabbit or a partridge or two for Jack, besides what he took for the king. Thus, Jack and Puss lived life comfortably in their small hut, and Jack was never hungry anymore. As time passed, Puss made several trips to the palace with fine game for the king, always telling the king that it was from his master. The noblemen at the palace were also all speaking about the Marquis of Carabas, whom none had seen or heard of, but everyone was curious about. I think it is now time for the king to meet my master. How is that going to happen? My master has no fine clothes nor a carriage to take him to the palace. I have to think of some plan. The next day when Puss set off to catch some rabbits, he saw some people talking excitedly by the road leading to the river. Curious, he walked up to the crowd to find out what was happening, and heard the people saying that the king and his beautiful daughter would be passing by the next day. A brilliant idea came into Puss's mind, and he rushed home. Master, master! Hold on, hold on, what's the matter? Master, it is time to introduce you to the king. Puss, are you out of your mind? I think you need to rest a bit. No, no, master. This is the opportunity for us. Tomorrow, the king is passing this way with his daughter. And this is the opportunity for us. I really don't know what you're talking about, but I think you want us both to be killed by the king. Master, just listen to me, please. Trust me, and just do as I tell you to. Jack was not completely convinced, and was not too keen to go before the king. Puss has been very loyal to me, and given me no reason to doubt him. He's kept me well fed with all the rabbits and partridges that he catches for me. Maybe I should trust him, as he seems so confident of himself. Oh well, I'll go along with you, but I just hope you know what you're doing and don't land me in yourself in trouble. Don't you worry, Master. Your fortune is going to change, and your days in this miserable hut are soon going to be over. 
The next day, Huss took Jack to the river beside which the king was supposed to pass. When he saw from afar the king's carriage approaching, he went to Jack. Quick, master. Take off your clothes and get into the water. What the? Are you out of your mind? Please do as I tell you, master. There is no time to be lost. I just hope you know what you're doing. Puss quickly hid Jack's old and tattered clothes and went back to where Jack was standing in the cold water. As the king's carriage came near, Puss started shouting out, Help, help! Oh, someone please help! The king looked out of the carriage window and instantly recognized Puss. Oh, your majesty. My master had come to bathe in the river and some robbers have made off with his clothes. He will surely drown or freeze to death if he is not saved. The king immediately ordered his attendants to bring Jack out of the water and sent a groom to the palace to bring a fine suit for Jack. The groom soon returned with a purple and gold suit befitting a royal person. Jack, who was a handsome lad, looked like a prince in the new clothes. Finally we meet the Marquis of Carabas. Must say, he is a handsome fellow. The king invited Jack to sit with him in the royal carriage, where his daughter was also seated. Jack, who was a shy boy, was hesitant to do so. Oh, do come and join us. We shall be very pleased with your company. The princess's sweet and beckoning smile made Jack immediately fall in love with her, and he went and sat down beside her. When Puss saw his master seated with the princess, he went and told the coachman the direction to follow, and ran ahead as fast as he could. He reached a field of corn where reapers were busy at work, and told them, the king's carriage is making its way here. If anyone asks, you must say these fields belong to the Marquis of Caraba. If anyone dares to disobey me, he will be chopped to pieces. The workers were terrified of Puss's threats and promised to obey him. Since it was a lovely day, the king told his coachman to go slowly so that he could enjoy the view. My, my, what a beautiful sight these fields of corn are. Who do they belong to? I wonder. As instructed by Puss, the workers all answered that the fields belonged to the Marquis of Carabas. Puss went further ahead and instructed the shepherds and farm workers to also say everything belonged to the Marquis of Carabas. What a fine herd of cattle! Who do they belong to? Your Majesty, these belong to the Marquis of Carabas. I see. And these fields of golden wheat also belong to the Marquis of Carabas? Yes, Your Majesty. They all belong to our noble and kind master, the Marquis of Carabas. The king was very pleased to know that not only was his visitor handsome and charming, but was extremely wealthy as well. Of course, Jack had no idea how Puss was doing all this, but he had fallen so much in love with the beautiful princess that he could think of nothing else. In the meanwhile, Puss had rushed ahead to the castle of the very, very mean ogre, who not only owned a beautiful castle, but also all the fields and cattle that Puss had told everyone to say belonged to the Marquis of Carabas. Greetings, sir. Ah, Puss in Boots. <laughs> now that's a sight I've never seen before. What are you doing here? I have heard so much about you, sir, that I thought I must see you. Ah, well. Now the ogre was a very conceited and proud fellow and loved it when anyone praised him. Everyone seems to be talking of your great skills. I have heard that you can change yourself to anything. I find that so hard to believe. Not hard at all. Not hard at all. Just watch this. Suddenly, instead of the ogre, there is a big ferocious lion sitting in front of Puss. Puss leapt up with a start and darted outside the window, clinging on for dear life. Ha ha ha! Frightened you, didn't I? Now come on in. You believe in my powers now? Phew! That was a mighty scare you gave me. Okay, okay. Get your breath back. Puss looks intently at the ogre. Now what? You still doubt my powers? Oh, no, 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 sir. Not at all. Then what is the matter? Er, I don't mean to offend you, sir, but I was just wondering about something. What is it? Out with it! Sir, you are already so huge, so it wouldn't have been difficult for you to change into a big lion. But are you powerful enough to change into something tiny? Like maybe a rat or a mouse? I see you are still not convinced about my powers. Well, here goes. So saying, the ogre turned into a mouse. No sooner had he done this, Puss seized the opportunity. He pounced on him and quickly gobbled him up. Well, mighty ogre, 
that is the end of you. <laughs> as soon as Puss ate up the ogre, the whole castle seemed to come to life. All the people who the wicked ogre had cast under his spell were turned back to humans. There was joy everywhere, and everyone hugged Puss for freeing them from the cruel ogre. Oh, we don't know how to thank you. We owe our lives to you. Well, I do need something from you all. Soon the king of the land is coming this way, and you all need to hail the Marquis of Karabakh, as he is your new master. Don't worry, he is not at all like the demon who you were under. Your new master is a very kind and noble soul. Anything, anything for the new master. Good. Now I want you all to gather in the hall to welcome your new master, who will be arriving with the king himself. When the king saw the castle from afar, he wondered who the owner could be. And as they came near, he saw Puss standing by the gates, bowing low to the king. Welcome, your majesty, to the castle of my master, the Marquis of Karaba. My, my, this is one fine castle, even more beautiful than my own palace. I'm sure it must be beautiful from within also. Do come in, your majesty, and see for yourself. Jack was totally confused, not knowing what was happening. He looked at Puss, who winked at him. Jack then realized that it was Puss who had somehow done all this, and gave a grateful smile to Puss. The king was very impressed on seeing the castle from within, as well as all the ladies and gentlemen. You are indeed a fine young man, generous and noble. I shall be the happiest man if you would accept my daughter to be your wife. Oh, what more could Jack have asked for? His loyal puss had made him the owner of a wonderful castle full of treasures, and now the king himself was offering him the hand of his daughter in marriage, who he had already fallen deeply in love with. Your Majesty, it would be an honor to make the beautiful princess my bride. I will love her for the rest of my life. Oh, you couldn't have made me happier. I know that after me, you will rule the kingdom justly and with great wisdom. So, Jack and his princess lived happily ever after. And Puss? Oh, he was petted and pampered, had the best of cream and other goodies. Of course, he did not give up his favorite pastime of chasing the rats and mice, but only to keep himself entertained and exercise his legs a bit. I'm coming straight from your grandma's cottage. She is not well and wants to see you at the earliest possible. Oh, thank you, Uncle. I will tell my mom. Okay. I have to leave. Bye, girl. Bye, Uncle. Red Riding Hood immediately rushed to her mother, who was preparing a cake. 